You'll be fine, I promise. Look, man. Back in the... Oh, shit. Back in the fucking day... Oh, I gotta... I fucked up. We're in the game. Look, man. Back in the day... Right. Look, look, stream. I I'll be honest. Let's, let's go through this. Let's go through my life cycle. It's coming up as a professional Call of Duty player. Back in the day, when I was in middle school... Let's say, I I'm 22 years old. I'm 22 and a half, technically. I, um... Back in middle school was when I was playing... Like, 6th grade, I was playing, like, Halo 2. Well, no, it was, like, 7th grade. Anyway, look, look, I stopped playing baseball. Call of Duty 4 was, like, my 8th grade? My 7th? I was playing Halo before I played Call of Duty. Well, because back then when I played COD 2, <clears throat> in public matches and shit, I was just chilling, you know? Wasn't taking it so serious competitive-wise. Fucking, in middle school somewhere, I was playing Halo 2, living normal life, just playing Halo 2 for fun. Uh, I got into it so much that I transitioned into Halo 3 and Call of Duty 4. Call of Duty 4 and 08, I took really serious. Got into the competitive side of it. Um, is that right? Bets, right? Yeah. Got into the competitive side of it. And you know damn well, like, I was fighting my parents. Like, fighting my parents. Not, like, legit fighting, but, like, fighting on the fact that, like, yo, I'm, <coughs> I'm trying to play this. Like, I'm, I think I'm good enough, whatever. I'm trying to fucking succeed at this. And thus, like, I, I was trying to keep up grades, like, argue, like, yeah, like, I don't, like, I can play this much, whatever. Until 2010, well, I mean, 2009, I was still getting, like, some checks from, like, online tournaments. So, it was kind of, like, showing them, you know, like, hey, like, I'm actually getting some money from this, like, you know, like, instead of, hey, work a part-time job. The fucking close range time to kill in this game is broken, they gotta fix it. I even worked a job in uh. ninth grade. Wait, where'd you work? Um, I worked at this part. It was actually pretty dope. On oh, my eyes. I got an eyelash in my eye. It was actually pretty dope. Anyway. 2009. Uh, I worked like a summer or whatever. I was like, fuck that shit. We're playing. We're playing. We get a few checks in the mail. Right? I'm like, yo, mom, dad, like, look, I'm making some money. Relax. Anyway. Ended up. <clears throat> 2010. Happened MW2. I was starting to get like you know some some decent money you know some online some online tournament checks coming in the mail hundred dollars here you know fifty dollars there hundred dollars here adding up and then playing the PCLs I get second one it's like a thousand qualify I got second in a lot actually no no it wasn't a thousand it was three seventy five each for each second place so I got like second four times in four different PCLs qualify for Nats on PS3 pick up Teep. I'm like, yo, like, this is still, like, my parents still are like, what the fuck, like, not what the fuck, but they're just like, like, they think I'm wasting my time, right? Like, they don't, they still don't get it. They still don't see it. And this is, this is, dude, this is hard, a lot harder. Back then, Call of Duty was a lot, lots, look at, like, it was looking slow. It wasn't much to play. It wasn't much money to make. It was way different. Everything was online. Anyway. 2010. Fucking, uh... Qualify for Nats. It's like November. <coughs> I drop Cynical. I pick up T. We're going to Nats. It's me, Miles, Juggernometry, and TP. We're going to Nats. We're hella hype. My dad, I was 16 at the time. My dad at the time was like, what? You're not about to go to Dallas like by yourself to go play a, a video game tournament? Like, what? Like, no. Whatever. You know, typical like parent being overprotective, not understanding what the hell their, their, their child is talking about. So anyway, end up... Sponsor covers the hotel room, okay? So I had to get my flight. So I bought my flight and my dad, right? And my dad comes out. Like, the only way he would go is if he came out with me. So he comes out. MLG Dallas, 2010, in the Hilton Anatole Hotel. It was actually a really dope event. Um, He comes out, whatever. He sees what's going on, and he's blown away, mind blown. Like, can't believe what he's what he's looking at. Like, can't believe what's involved in this. And bam, like from that moment on, my dad's like my biggest supporter, like all about it, understands it. Where the fuck did this guy go? Did he really rap middle? Come on, be right here. Oh, you ruined my clutch. Anyway, point being, he saw it, mind blown. As 
soon as that moment happened, as soon as my dad walked in the doors, saw the fucking multi-million dollar equipment at MLG Dallas, the massive main stage, the screens, the projector screens on all sides, <clears throat> saw all of that, that moment on, <clears throat> he understood. He got it. He understood what I was talking about. He understood what I was doing. He understood why I stayed up so late on some nights, you know. Like, my schedule, I'm not kidding, guys, was like, in early high school, after I quit baseball and everything, like, it was, it was literally... I'm I'm up till 2, 3 a.m. in the morning playing Call of Duty in some form just because I wanted to be the best, right? Like, I was playing competitive Call of Duty till 2, 3 a.m. in the morning playing GB, just scrimming, whatever it was. One shot, bro. Hella late. Getting like three hours of sleep to wake up, go to school, oh. do my best at school, come oh. back home take like a two, three hour nap after school to then eat dinner and then get right back on and play all, all night, right? Like managing my homework somewhere in there, trying to do my best. <clears throat> Point being, anything you care about in life, you're going to have to put hella time into, no matter what. Call of Duty just so happens to be an example that I have. You suck at doing stuns. Right. My parents didn't understand Every it. They didn't get it. Like They just thought I was a kid who was obsessed with video games and not realizing that I was like ruining my future, whatever it may have been. So, then it got to the point where we got second in Dallas. We got like two grand each or something like that. Um, and yeah, my parents finally understood. Like finally, after after like two, two, three year, two and a half, three years of like begging, explaining, not getting through, and then bam understood and once once you like got to that moment where they understood and they kind of gave you your leeway and like respected it and whatever it all just became so much easier like it just got so much easier like i was able to play i didn't have to fucking sit there and debate and argue you're gonna get sniped debate and argue and fucking convince and explain and whatever everything that I was doing like it just it came second nature they understood right they got it so it was like two three years where I was battling them to understand and get it until they finally did and then bam 2011 happened the pro circuit was announced for Call of Duty we won two of the events we had a pretty good year 2012 happened this was my senior year 2012 was Modern Warfare 3 and uh, it was it was a trash year COD had no land support Wow. Cod had nothing, you know, there was nothing to play, nothing to do. There was some online tournaments. So my 2012, which was my senior year, was actually my year to take a break from Call of Duty. And I did. TP used it to stream. But I finished up senior year. I, uh... I took a break from Call of Duty. <clears throat> I graduated. I moved out after my birthday. Like, literally, like, three days after my birthday, I moved out. Um... Me and a, a longtime friend of mine named DJ moved down to Wilmington, which is a beach here in North Carolina, to go to school, uh, you? to go to college. The bridge. And then, uh, and then I came back. Nate Shot offered me and Team an opportunity to go to EGL8 in Manchester, UK, to play with him in this uh, yeah, EGL Model Fair 3 tournament, where we ended up getting like fourth, I think, or fifth. Um, Ready for and then yeah, and then that kind of, and as soon as that happened, you know, I had to apply for a passport. I was living on my, or not living on my own. I was living with a roommate down in Wilmington. I was like figuring out how to get a fucking passport. Went to Manchester, came back, and then as soon as that, I hit up Teep. I'm like, Yo, Teep, next year's gonna be huge. Black Ops 2. We got we got Quantic back <clears throat> after taking a break for so long. We got Quantic on our side, still. And uh, me and Teep are looking for teammates, and uh, we team, we ended up teaming with Fears. Um, who at the time I had played with a lot in 2011. I had known him since 2010. Actually, I'd known him since COD 4. Uh, and I knew he was hella good in the beginning, so we pick up Fears. And then, uh, Crim6 was returning from Halo. Crim6 was returning from Halo. And, uh, I had known Crim in 08 and 09 and how good he was, and even at the start of MW2. So, I hit up Teep. I'm like, yo, Teep. Like, Teep was 100% against this decision. I, I couldn't convince Teep if I tried. I was like, Tyler, listen to me. We need to play with Crim. Krim's good at fucking, he'll be good at Call of Duty, he'll grind, he'll put in the time. But I finally convinced Tyler, like, it took me weeks to convince Tyler to play with Krim 6. So this is, this is the end of 2012, 
Black Ops 2 is about to come out. Everyone's playing Black Black Ops 1 8, right? I struggle to convince Tyler. We end up picking up Krim. We're playing Black Ops 1 8s on like the old console, and Krim's calling me like, yo, dude, can you get on and pick me in these 8s? Like, no one will pick me. No one believes I'm good. No one wants to like let me play. So I'm like hopping on COD, like picking, like being like, yo, I'll play. And like at the time, I, my, my rep in COD was pretty high. You know, my, um, my, uh, Jesus Christ, dude. My stock as a player was high. <coughs> so it was very easy for me to get on and be like, hey, like, look, I'm picking teams. I'm a captain in eights, whatever. Picking Krim. Krim's grinding. He's kind of bad. Like, he'll, he'll even admit this. Krim was really bad at the beginning uh, when he was trying to play Black Ops 1. And at this point, Teep was doubting me even more. He's like, bro, Krim blows. Anyway, Black Ops 2 comes out. Krim plays more than anybody. Like, just anybody. Like, he grinds the fuck out of the game. Gets hella good, right? Krim gets nasty. Black Ops 2. Just really fucking good. <coughs> and so it's me, Krim, Teep, and Fears. And we win the Frag Cup, which is the machine of a tournament that was in like the middle of November, right after the game came out, two weeks. We win. And Teep's like, wow, like, I'm glad I listened. Like, you're right. He's fucking nasty. We're nasty. Whatever. We go to UMG Chicago, UMG Chicago which is the event I ended up pushing Nade. We get second, but well, we got second while winning the map count. So I personally was like, just hella pissed at how the tournament was ran, the structure. Um, not exactly the reason me and Nade got into like the little scuffle we did or whatever. But regardless, like we lost UMG event, but it should have been a continuation series and it wasn't. It ended up being like a two best of five series. And um, we, we, we won the map count five, four, but lost the tournament. So it was dumb. We got second. And at the time, Frico, <coughs> who we beat, which was John, Too Quick, Killa, and Pharma, we beat them. And Too Quick played amazing. Okay? Too Quick played amazing. Really good. Um, and yeah, the, the UMG Chicago event was like no patch on any of the systems. It was a full auto foul that had already been nerfed. That We just were playing with no patch. It was really whack. Two left. Wow. Fuck. Oh, I'm going to Yeah, we lost, whatever. And we're like, we weren't sure in fears, like we weren't confident. <clears throat> Even though he played he played decent, he just he didn't he seemed like distracted out of it. I don't know really what happened. Um anyway, we we weren't confident, so we, we were like, wow, too quick played hella good. But at the time we were known as the best team in the game. Like even though Optic won the event We're playing this out, fuck this. Even though Optic won the event, we were still known wait, do I gotta end it? Like by the rules? I don't know. Does he, if he switches teams, I just played out. Whatever. Anyway, by the or by like the community vote, like we are still known as the best team. Like everyone was like, Cole's still the best team. So we drop fears. We're looking for a fourth. It's it's us three, me, Team Krim, and at the time we could have picked up Karma. Wow, he's inside bottom room left door. At the time we could have picked up Karma. We decided not to pick up Karma because if we picked up Karma, that meant Krim had to switch. Oh, but down low, down low. Mick Krim had to switch to a to an, an AR, which was the foul role at the time, and we weren't confident with that, like, cause Krim and Karma kind of did the same thing. We weren't really like, we didn't want Krim to switch his role, cause Krim was so good with a sub. So we ended up picking up Too Quick, who was the best AR on Fariko, like, 100% was at UMG Chicago. Too Quick was the best AR on Fariko. So we, so we pick up Too Quick. We go to MLG DOS, or no, we do the, the league playground to qualify for champs. This is what killed, I think, two quicks, like, just everything. Like, that league playground, we played 900 4v4 matches on Black Ops 2 league play in one month. We qualify, we get the 8th spot, there's like the 6th spot in the online league play qualification. <clears throat> it's like 827 matches or something like that. And two quick just kind of changed as a player throughout that period. We go to MLG Dallas, we get fourth. Uh, we weren't really happy. Um, we didn't really, we didn't really like, we didn't really think Too Quick was the same player that he was when we picked him up. Um, I think it, it was, it was the fact that we played that, that league play thing, which kind of adjusted Too Quick and how he played the game. Anyway, um, so rosters a lot. We can't make a move. We go into champs, we get fourth. 
Um, still not, you know, not happy. Kind of pissed off. Uh, we pick up Clayster. Uh, we actually picked him up that night. Um, Clay was in the lobby drinking a beer. I texted him. I'm like, yo, um, come into my room real quick. It was like three of us just chilling in our room. I was like, yo, come into my room real quick. Uh, let's talk. Uh, I got some plans. Got some ideas to... Uh, SAS. Got some plans I want to run by. So he comes up. We talk. I'm like, yo, Clay, like, did hella good at Dallas. I think you're a good player. Um, Can we win this map? Can we, like, try real quick? Yeah, I'm trying. It's 4-5, right? <laughs> He's back. I stunned one close and one's deeper than they are. Hitting deep? <clears throat> so anyway. I don't help. Absolute. I'm staying down. Oh, he's below you? Uh, a couple of them, a couple of them. Oh, okay. Is yeah. that the uh, barrier guy? I don't see him at barrier. He moved? Wait, he's bottom, in the building. Broken. Got shot him. Absolute. He's even weaker. Yeah, hit him again. Okay, he's in the broken. Just stay alive. Don't rush him. <coughs> so I talked to Clay for like a good 30. Middle cross. I'll just come over here. Uh, do you have my bro er, broken side? I'll look middle. Where are you at? Sit in this corner. There you go. Yeah, just sit there. I'll sit here. So we talked to Clay. Clay understands. He gets it. So Clay's Clay's like, I don't know. I'll think about it. But I could say, like, I could, like looking into someone's eyes, you know what they're thinking. I could tell. What the fuck? This guy saw me? Oh, you're not stream watching, bro. What? You don't just check that. You don't just check that, you fucking cheater. He's in broken. Is a good spot like this? No. Truthfully, I think it's a horrible spot, but it might work. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, you already committed to it. Might as well keep it. Throw a, throw a stun at where the granny propane is. Right. Shit, baby. 5-5, five, five, right? Uh -huh. This motherfucker's cheating. Why is he in a ravine? Like, come on, bro. Could you make it any more obvious to Keeve? I know he was he was literally getting ready for you. Fucking cheater. You win this stream, bro. Like, fuck you. Anyway, Clay knew he wanted to join. He kind of like played like the hard to get role. Like you're trying to like flirt with a girl, and he's like, oh, like I know I got all this to offer, but like he that's kind of how the how Clay played it out. But like it, in my mind, I knew what Clay was thinking. Clay was not an idiot. He he was the oldest one on his team. He couldn't play an 18 plus events. One cross. He was the best one on his team. One cross. The guy needed uh, hey. So it took Clay all of like an hour to go back to the lobby and the then bridge. text me, "Yeah, I'm down to join." Stay down. Ah, uh, where are they at? They shooting me. Weak. I'm planning B. It one took guy, Clay all of an hour to join the team <laughs> after like playing hard to get for so long. We won this, right? Now, yeah. Good shit, baby. That's what I like to see. 2-0. Uh, I'm out. You out? All right. Good luck with what you're doing. Hope it all works yeah. out. I put in your. I'll try my best, brother. Take it easy. Text me if you want to play later. 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 User oh, disconnected from your channel. All right, stream. So before I hop on Discord with Nate Shot and and, and crew. Anyway, <clears throat> Clay's milking it, right? Like he's like, I know I got this this fat booty. Like I know I know you like you want me, but I'm gonna think about it. Anyway, Clay goes back to the lobby after he's in our room. Takes all of an hour, 45 minutes, like, t t tops. He, um, he texts me, <coughs> and he's like, yo, yeah, I'm down. All right, yeah, let's make this happen. Whatever. So I'm like, all right. So I hit up Cole. I hit up Complexity. And I'm like, yo, like, this is the move we got to make. Um, whatever. Make it happen. So about a month and a half goes by, we're grinding, right? We're like, damn, we're nice. Like, it, it, we got the foul ban. Um, I worked with Haggy a lot to get that ban because it was just so dumb. The cat 40s as well. Um, we get a ban, and Clay is nasty with the M8. He's hella good. We're all really good. Team's meshing well. The thing about that team that made us so good was the fact that all of us wanted to be the best one on the team. <clears throat> all of us had that mentality where we all want to be the best player, the one that's talked about. But in a sense that we don't want to be the spotlight hero. Like, we're not going to kill whore. Like, we're all playing for the win, right? We're all, like, playing the role we need to play to get the dub at the end of the day. We'll all bait for each other. But at the same time, we want to be the one making the biggest and the best plays. And that helped us so much because it was all, like, an, an inner competition, especially for me and Krim. 
Um, me and Krim got in a lot of arguments, a lot of like heated debates about how to play, why to do this, why to do that. Um, and we went at each other, but we went at each other in a sense that where no matter what, we were just bettering each other. Like we we're going neck and neck, but we just we were bettering each other as we did it. Um, and Teep was kind of like just the middleman. He was always the neutral kind of relaxed, calm personality. Not gonna really get in an argument. Just gonna say, "All right, man. Yeah, you're right. Like we'll try that." <clears throat> and having Teep, and then having you know me and Krim, which were really strong personalities on the team, and then Clayster, who kind of played devil's advocate, but at the same time, Clay had a very strong opinion. Um, we all worked so well to make each other better, and I don't think to this day any team has had that type of one mentality and two just like team chemistry, where we weren't the team that was always going to get along, the team that was always going to you know yeah good job bro, we we would hype each other up, but like we weren't going to sit there and like. We fake with each other. We were very real, very upfront and blunt about our opinions, and um, and it made us better. Anyway, go to Anaheim. We we show an impact. We win the tournament. Show on everybody. The coal run starts, and then once the coal run started to get back to where this was, my parents just kind of understood, right? Like from that point, my parents were like, "All right, like this is what he's doing full time." So. <clears throat> right before champs with too quick of 2013 I decided well I finished up the year I finished out the school year and then I decided that hey I was gonna take off college or I was gonna take off college you know um, at the time it just wasn't worth putting so much time and effort into school and missing out on Call of Duty and a lot of people don't know this but impact none of them were in school not one of them were in college they're all out of high school not one of them had any priorities outside of Call of Duty and Teep had a girlfriend Teep was in school Krim was in school I was in school um I also had a girlfriend at the time Clay was in school and Clay was still trying to balance his you know his living with his friends you know going out life so we all had a lot of priorities outside of Call of Duty which distracted us in that time period whereas Impact did not and Impact played non-stop every day and we were like, yo, like these guys are only edging us out because of how much they're able to play. So we all had this mutual talk. All it was me, it was all four of us. Oh, well, it was actually before we picked up Clay. So it was all three of us: me, Krim, and Tyler. Yo, guys, let's all take off school. It's worth it. Like we can go back. We have real money to make here. You know, we have a real opportunity in front of us where we can be the best, run the tournaments, make a lot of money, and and benefit by it. So we all took off college after champs it was actually right before champs because champs was in like april and i had just finished i think or i was i was i was ending at that time so after champs we all finished school um we took off we you know finished the semester and then went out um and then yeah and then my parents kind of understood like they kind of like at first they were kind of like weird about it um because at the time i was deciding like hey am i staying in wilmington where i'm living to go to school or am i moving back home whatever and we were all kind of really curious about it. We didn't know how it was going to play out. We didn't know how it was going to work. We weren't really sure if taking off school was a good idea. Like, yeah, the idea of making money playing Call of Duty was there, but taking off school and pursuing any type of career that's got no real longevity is always a really questionable decision, something you have to look at thoroughly. Anyway, we all decided to. We dropped to a great pickup clay. The coal run starts. And at that point, my parents just... They didn't bite me on it. You know, my parents kind of knew. I just made 25 grand. More than that. I made 25 grand at Champs alone. I had already made like 30, 33 grand on Black Ops 2. And it, the game's four months in, five months in. My parents just understood. And from that point on, I still never have had to... I just didn't have to convince them, like, the reasoning bes behind my decisions. Um. And yeah. And then, um, and then, you know, ever since then, like, yeah, my parents are kind of like, hey, you need to go back to school. Hey, you need to do this, do that. But it's still one of those things where, like, if the opportunity to make money is there, and if I'm pursuing it without wasting time and being lazy, then right now, there's no real reason for me to go back to school full time. There's kind of the, um, the idea that, hey, I have to take online classes and do this and that. But, but yeah. Um... Because if you get to a point where you're making money, right, and if I'm saving money, 
then I get to the point that the money I've made, I will be able to invest and put in other things. And there's plenty of opportunities I can go into with maybe real estate, um, mess with the stock market a little bit, just different opportunities while I could also go back and get my degree while making money that way. Anyway, um, I think someone asked in the chat, why did we drop Clay? <clears throat> it came down to the fact that Clay was viewing what, where we got and where we were differently than us. We felt like he wasn't taking it serious. Not in fact that he wasn't grinding, but we went to this uh, Machinima gig. We had a we had a work for hire type gig to do the prestige race at Machinima, and we could just tell Clay's attitude and mentality toward like the business side of stuff. Like, hey, this is our job, getting shit done. Just wasn't the same, and uh, Clay just kind of drifted off into this like not relating to us as teammates did. And back then, the way Call of Duty was 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 different is no one hung out <clears throat> with a bunch of players like at events you majority hung out with your team online you hung out with your team there wasn't this you know big skype chat with all the pros there wasn't this you know click clicky high school vibe to call of duty it was all just like yo this is my team this is my these are my business partners we're all gonna stay together grind together and get better together take it really serious and um and Clay was drifting off of that, and his performance was weird because Clay knew how good he was. Like there was there was no skill involved in Clay's dropping. Clay knew how good he was, but he wanted to play the game his way, and he wanted to argue a lot of things like that was just really unproductive, and it was causing a strain on our team. And at the time, Damon was very good, and we had the opportunity to get Damon, and we knew like, hey, if we get Damon, then you know we're gonna be very good, um, just as good if not better. And so we made the move. Um, we got we won we won UMG Philly. We got second at the regional event, but it was a, it was a weird, really weird event with no prize, and there was a lot of travel issues. That, it was just a weird event. Um, we lost like six four in a best eleven SB, and then we won champs. And then you know um, after champs, we went to X Games. We got third. We we should have took it way more serious than we did. Uh, we won UGC Niagara Niagara, and then with X Games we got third. <clears throat> but at that time. After we won UGC Niagara, I had been in conversations with EG for a little while, and we were all really focused on making that move happen, and that really distracted us from X Games. Um, you know, we flew out to, to San Francisco, we got signed to EG, we did a lot. We also went to a, stu a development studio working on a game, did some consultant work in Canada. Um, we were just very distracted after Niagara, and we didn't get too much time to play for X Games, and then we lost, we got third, and then we went into Anaheim with the fire, won, and then, uh, and then Damon was having some personal things going on, his baby was coming, we had to take off time, we had to take off an event, we took off UMG Dallas, <coughs> which Denial ended up winning, I believe, <coughs> and then we went to Gfinity, TB proposed to his girlfriend, and there was just a lot of team personal shit that was happening that caused our team to kind of implode. So Damon, Damon, you know, there was a lot of arguments going on and, and Damon was had a lot going on personally and um, and we decided it was best that Damon left <clears throat> and then we picked up Dito which was a dumb decision like not that anything against Dito, we just rushed the decision like we were nervous with the roster lock for season 3, there's a lot going on, we just rushed the decision um, I also entered a relationship at the time. Just a lot of shit went wrong outside of Call of Duty that, that uh, like personal things costed that team to continue its successful run. Um, and we went to um, went to ESWC with Dito one, and then after that, our contracts were close to ending. And I'll, I'll be honest, guys, the plan at the time was we were gonna come back from ESWC, we were gonna drop Dito. And we were gonna pick up Formal, and it was gonna be, it was gonna be an EG type team, me, Krim, Formal, Teep, and we were gonna continue it. Um, but I believe Krim and Formal got the offer to go to Optic, and they took it. And then um, Krim could have been a little bit more upfront because we had the impression we were sticking. Um, and um, then yeah, and then from then Optic bought out our contracts from EG. And uh, we were free to go, and then I joined FaZe and won the first event, and then after that, the, um, 
And you know, story. I lost my drive in Call of Duty after I won that event, and AW happened. I still managed to get third. <clears throat> and then, yeah. So basically, that long rant started from how I got my parents to understand what I was doing and what I was uh, overcoming at the time. Chargers, I missed your sub. I know you're not a, a first time sub, but welcome back, my man. I hope you win the giveaway. All right. Someone asked, would I team with Clay again? Yeah, of course I would. Clay's a good player. Um, I think Clay benefits with someone like me. Um, I don't know his opinion on that, but I think so. Clay's very good. Clay's, Clay's the type of person that he needs someone to bounce his ideas off of. Um, and I provided Clay that. And we, we got to great solutions and <clears throat> we figured a lot out together. And I think on his team now, he doesn't really have that. Um... He has two young guns in Tommy and Attach who are very good, not as experienced. And they have a Nable who comes from Halo background, which, yeah, he's experienced. But with the Call of Duty concepts, they need someone who can, he can bounce strategical ideas off of that they reply and not just agree. But yeah, that is, uh, that's all I got from that story. I'm joining the Nate Shots Discord server. And we're going to get some 4v4 UMGs in before this kickoff. <coughs> hope you guys all enjoyed hope i gave some insight and uh filled you guys in on a lot of things you didn't know and uh yeah 